This is part two of topic four in Material Engineer Materials Engineering Mate 210. Last time in part one we talked about turbine blades and how we have the ability to orient the crystal of a turbine blade in such a way that we maximize its performance against the high stresses and high temperatures that a turbine blade experiences inside the jet engine. So what we want to talk about next is the specific properties that we have to deal with when we design something like a turbine blade. And these are what we call the plastic properties. So the plastic properties are all measured as a function of performance, and there are three primary plastic properties that we're concerned with. First, the yield strength, then the tensile strength, and finally we'll talk about ductility. Now all of these properties can be measured from the stress-strain diagram. We first saw the stress-strain diagram in topic two when we talked about the elastic portion of the curve. The elastic portion of the curve, if you remember, is the linear portion of the curve. Okay, The linear relationship between strain on the x-axis and stress on the y-axis. But now we're talking about the plastic portion of the curve. And here we have the yield strength, which is the point at which plastic deformation be first begins. The tensile strength, the maximum stress that a material can withstand prior to fracture. And then finally, the ductility, which is the maximum strain that can be withstood before fracture. All of these properties occur above the yield strength of the material. I have a couple of videos that I'd like to show you, but unfortunately they don't work in this format. So what I'll do is I'll show them in class and give you an opportunity to write down some observations. But for now, it's enough to know that we'll show you a macro view or human scale perspective of what it looks like when a piece of annealed copper is pulled in tension. And then we'll take a look up close at that piece of copper and see what happens in an electron microscope when we pull on the sample. And you can really see the effect of the, on the surface of the material as it's being plastically deformed. Well, let's look at how we actually measure some of these properties. First is yield strength. It turns out that the point at which we go from elastic to plastic to behavior would occur right about here on this stress-strain diagram. The problem is, is it right there at that break point, or is it a little bit below that, or a little bit above that? It's really quite hard to tell, and in real test data, because of the noise in the signal, it's almost impossible to figure out exactly where it goes from being linear to nonlinear. For that reason, we don't use that point. That point is called the proportional limit, and as I said, it's very hard to measure. Instead, we use something called the 0.2% offset method for determining the yield strength of a material. Here's how the method works. First of all, you find the 0.2% offset method on the, the x-axis or the strain axis. Now remember, 0.2% is equal to 0.002 strain. So we find 0.002 strain on the x-axis. Then we draw a line called an offset. An offset means parallel to but shifted from. So our line is going to be parallel to the elastic portion of the curve but shift it over 0.002 strain. So let's draw that line in now. So there's the 0.2% offset. We draw the line as, per, as, excuse me, as parallel to the elastic portion of the curve as we can, and where it intersects becomes the yield strength. So we draw a line over to the y-axis and label that as the yield strength. Now the yield strength is going to be in stress units. So typically the units are megapascals or PSI. One of the challenges of measuring the yield strength is that the tensile curve, or stress-strain curve, is actually at a much larger scale in terms of strain than we can measure. So that offset line is very, very close in reality to the elastic portion of the stress-strain curve. So oftentimes we have to blow up that part of the graph in order to be able to draw that line accurately. We'll do an example or two in class so you can get a better idea of how this is done. To measure the tensile strength, it's really quite easy. We look for the maximum stress on the curve. And the maximum stress always occurs at the top, of course. So we draw a line over to the y-axis, and we label that as the ultimate tensile strength. Lastly, how do we measure ductility? Well, we get, we're going to make an assumption when we measure ductility, and that assumption is that the plastic strain the material experiences is much, much greater than the elastic strain. And that's certainly true for metals and plastics, but that breaks down when we talk about ceramic materials, 
where the elastic strain is actually quite a bit larger than the plastic strain. So don't try to apply this, this method to ceramic, ceramic materials. The way you do this is you take a, draw a line straight down from the point of fracture or the end of the stress strain diagram and we call that the strain to failure. Then we define ductility in terms of what is called the percent elongation. And the percent elongation is given by this equation. Percent elongation or percent EL is equal to the strain at failure times 100. So in other words we take the strain when it breaks and convert it to a percent strain. Pretty straightforward. Now what if you didn't have the stress strain diagram and all you had was the broken test sample? Well in theory you could measure the test sample before it broke and measure it after it broke and take the difference in lengths divided by the original length and multiply it by 100. If you think about it, this is just the change in length over the original length, which is the equation for strain. This is an acceptable way to do it, but the reality is, is that you get much better results by using the stress-strain diagram than you would by using the specimen and putting it back together. Because you'll never get it to fit perfectly back together again to measure the actual length right before it broke.